Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the C Kappa Invitationals. We're here with the first season, and it is the grand finals, the singleton best of five in the entire double LM bracket. It's come down to Fnatic versus Signature Trust, and that series is getting started right now. I'm Zayori from Moonduck TV. Today, we don't have a solo cast. I'm joined by Mott, the other solo caster that's been doing most of the coverage. Today, we decided, hey, you know what? Let's tag team the finals, have some fun, and talk about some seriously good Dota. Mott, yeah. my man, how you doing today? Uh, it's a little early. I've had a. Uh, I've been Time doing most of the European games, but those games have been starting around like eleven or twelve ish. So I'm up a little bit early. But for this, for this particular series, I would get up, you know, at like two in the morning to cast this thing, honestly, because yeah. I saw Fnatic recently Fnatic. up against uh, TNC in the lower bracket final. I'm a big fan of their play style. I also really like Sig Trust. I've liked them since like the TI4 qualifiers, with Lakel's obviously leading the way. Yeah, um, this is a very good squad, and they were the only team to bring down Fnatic in the in the entirety of this bracket. Remaining. Fnatic had like one, not only just in this tournament, but in every other tournament they'd Five been on a tear. Yeah. And then Signature Trust came in and two owed them, and you're like, what just happened? Yeah, and that it was in the winter right. bracket finals, no less. I mean, that series, I think when I looked at the bets, it was either 83 or 87 percent in favor of Fnatic. Everybody thought it would be a blowout the other way, and Sig Trust just completely wiped the floor with them. Both games. They fourth picked Medusa for Lakels, yeah. and they Ten played that hero remaining. so much different than what you're used to. You know, you see a Medusa with a couple of other Five decently good late game remaining. heroes, and you think, all right, they're going to turtle up, they're going to farm 45 minutes plus, they're really going to shine. Instead, Reserve. they roam around as soon as he gets like phase boot drum. It becomes yeah, a, drum. a, a yep. fighting Medusa that uses yeah. stone gaze. And I, I think in one of those games, it was like 10 minutes, and Lakels was like 3 0 and 4 on fucking Medusa of all yeah, heroes. It's, it's kind of nuts how they Oof. play him, man. He, he's just, Lakel's kind of has, he does love Fnatic to play that turtle up protection back. style of, you know, safe lane carries, and he really loves the late gamers, but he also likes to be aggressive on certain heroes that don't necessarily, that aren't necessarily aggressive that early on. Like, I, like you talked about the Medusa is one of them. I mean, he just plays a ton of late game cores as well, but he can yeah. make them work early, and I think remaining. that's a... It's more of a factor because I feel like a lot of it has to do with the fact that Signature Trust are Five really good as a team as a whole, like together early on in the game. They know what yeah. they want to accomplish. They want to be aggressive. They want to take over the map. They want to, they want to make sure they accomplish objectives and not just farm for the late game. And they're going to have to do that against Fnatic because Fnatic is a team that can play almost any style of Dota. And a lot of that has to come down to, this is a team without Mushi, by the way, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. But 343's drafting has been... Yeah. Pretty much outstanding. This guy has actually been insanely good. Like, he came out of left field. If you told me this guy at 343 would be this good, I'd be like, you're wrong. But he's he's literally, like, they, they've lost two games in the last, like, 12. And a lot yeah. of it has to do with his drafting. Oh, you're absolutely right, man. Mushi's one of the most iconic names in this region. Dyer so when you hear about back. someone trying to fill his shoes as captain, drafter, and kind of star player, those, those are huge shoes to fill. So, yeah. One thing I love about this region, though, man, they like the Bat Rider. Fnatic is going to pick it up early on here. I, and, and the games that I've seen, at least, I don't know how many you've got to cast in this tournament where Bat Rider's been picked up this early. He seems to be like a boom or bust hero for me, where yes. he either just dominates and takes over, and you think, man, why are people not playing Bat Rider? Or he gets ganked a couple times, and you're like, wow, now I see why people don't play Bat Rider. <laughs> They're like, usually, and, and a lot of it has to do with, I think, picking a jungling hero with Bat Rider. When you, when you see Bat Rider and he gets ganked, you're like, well, he could just always go back to the jungle, right? Like, that doesn't happen anymore. It's not yeah. a thing that's like, it's not that prevalent in Dota, which is really weird. Whereas, like, a Batrider, like, oh, he goes to the offlane once, he, he dies, and then he heads to the jungle and he starts jungling from like level three. Yeah. That doesn't exist really anymore. Like, you go to the offlane, maybe you go to the jungle occasionally, yeah, you get one or two camps, you come back to the offlane, try to leech experience. It's, it, I agree with you completely. Five it is very remain. boom or bust on this hero. And, uh, even when you get a very early blink dagger, I've seen teams that have gotten early Reserve blinks, and not only just in the SEA region, but like in the NA region as well. You'll get an early blink dagger like six minutes, yeah. and the rest of your team isn't farmed. And then you get a couple of good blink lassos, but you just die. And yeah. all of a sudden, you're not really having that big impact that you would like. Whereas somebody like Doom is very, very impactful in this particular patch. I don't know if you've seen this at all, but I the CIS region loves this four position Doom. Mm -hmm. It's like it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. They go in with boots first. Yep. They maybe get an Iron Town, but usually they don't. And then they get 1-1-1, one, 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 where they get a point in Infernal Blade at level 3. And at level 3, they walk out of the jungle, and they look to find fights and engagements. Yep. And it's the strangest thing I've ever seen, because... Like, four position Doom has never been popular, like, ever in Dota, I don't think. Maybe a couple of times I mean, back two patches bit. ago. It's always yeah. been that kind of, like, niche like, a little bit of a, a temptation. It's possible, but not that many people do it. This has right. been, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I've seen it 
probably when Doom is not banned, I would say at least like thirty per, to forty percent of the games I've cast in yes. this tournament, teams have gone for it, and it's pretty effective. It hasn't it worked really in every is. single game, but Remaining. with the scorched earth and boots first, you can chase almost anybody down in those yes. first couple levels, and yes. you can get that snowball rolling really fast. And and the good thing is you don't necessarily have to pick up that ensnare, you know, from the Dark Troll Summoner. You don't have to pick up uh, the Sensor Conqueror creep to, to have it disable. If you have a good disable on top of it, you just come in and you're the, the China Doom, quote unquote, where you get the crit wolf, the alpha wolf. And then mm -hmm. you just hit people and you're like, well, I guess I'm dead now. I guess this guy just has like a million <laughs> damage and I'm getting chased down by him with Scorched Earth. That's great. So, and, and on top of that, they have Surge now with Darkseer in the offlane, Iron Shell as well. So... They can get some ganks. They can rotate pretty effectively with this Doom. Yeah. But really, it comes down to who they put up in the mid lane. Like, that's that's where the, the, the Doom is going to have the biggest impact. If he decides to roam mid, if he decides to find kills mid, or at least be effective in zoning mid, is what you're going to be looking for. And it's oh. sure they haven't picked up their mid hero yet. They picked up the Spectre yeah. for the safe laner. Whereas Fnatic, they also haven't picked up their mid laner. So we don't know what mid one's going to play. We don't know what Savior Trust is going to play. So there's still a lot left here in this pool this draft from sig trust seems like there it could be deceptive to me it looks very straightforward they're just going to grab a classic mid laner maybe we should ban out queen of pain a good team fighter I, i'm not totally convinced that deuce is off the table here i i think they Five would put medusa mid remaining. into a safe lane specter if uh, they they really felt like it was a comfort pick and the team Reserve fight from the, the stone gates would actually synergize pretty well here. You've got Death Ward, Haunt, Vac, Wall. There's a lot of AoE damage already. DHG, Shakira mid, yes. which they've been running a ton of. Yes, by the way. that could they, be really good. That's here, not actually. only just them, by the way. I, I have no idea where this came from, but it's like a lot of SCA teams. I think TNC has run a little bit for TD you know, as well. The first time I saw it, I felt kind of like an idiot because I thought it would be not very good. And if you go for the, the high DPS build on Shakira where you skip Ice Path or go for maybe one value point, if you really need an interrupt, dual breath as the primary does an absurd amount of it's damage. Amount if of you're damage. solo yeah. mid and you're like hitting level seven on par with their mid and you're one of the highest levels in the game, your damage output is ridiculous on that right. hero. Way it's... more than I think most people realize. Because who plays Core Jakiro? Who even realized right. that he did all that? Right. I think people kind of realize that he was good in the off lane, but he just doesn't have that kind of situation where he can be in that lane anymore. It's back. like putting any other... You go back into the days of Dota 1 when supports were the prevalent mid heroes, and it's kind of the same sort of thought process where you get yeah. your early level six or seven and you have all of this damage output and maybe some control, and that's why people love it. And, and Fnatic, they know that this is a problem, so they ban out the Jakiro. Instead, they go for the Zeus, which is a super global strategy with the Spectre. I, I am like a it. big fan of this. I think this is great. But the big problem is that Zeus is easily gankable, especially with an Enchantress and a Rubik on your squad. Mm -hmm. You have to decide what you go for mid here if you're Fnatic. OD's available, by the way, if they want to pick that up. I don't not it's not it's actually okay against the Zeus. Yeah. All things considered. I I've seen like Viper work pretty well in the last couple of days, but that hero is not that great. So there's a lot of options here for Fnatic. Yeah, I haven't Ten seen too many Viper remaining. picks uh, in this region, but I I really like this Sig Trust draft, man. I I, I can't remaining. lie, it's really got everything: pretty good lanes, huge amount of team fight in the mid game, and pretty darn good Reserve late game time. as well with Spectre Doom uh, and Darkseer. For Fnatic, it is nice that they have the Rubik. The Null Field will help against the Zeus a little bit, but that's only uh, a band aid. Zeus with a, a Veil and an Aether Lens is going to do a lot of damage this game. Great hero to have against the Bat Rider as well. If you're really clutch with your ults, uh, sometimes you can catch the Bat Rider before he blinks to initiate, break his blink dagger, and uh, kind of mess up his day. So there's some potential there. Good to have against the Enchantress as well. Ten Big magical remaining. burst uh, cuts right through that untouchable. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about what they want Five to grab here. Remaining. Yeah, that there's makes the sense. Yeah, good call. It's, it's I mean, hard it just, to pass him up. At this point, you have to kind of concern yourself with getting doomed. And uh, obviously, if you get ganked a couple of times, that's the biggest problem for an Outworld of Hours is, is catching back up into a Dota game. Once you're behind, the game's pretty yeah. much over for this hero. And I think that he's in a, a good spot where he'll be able to get good farm. He should be able to do some decent damage to the Zeus. He has very good roaming supports, the Enchantress and the Rubik. Mm -hmm. um, I am a bit concerned that the Rubik is going to be the hero they have in the safe lane alone, as the Enchantress will be jungling for a majority of the time. But I, I yeah. think that they're going to... They've made this work before. They beat MVP Phoenix with the, the Rubik, Enchantress, and OD. So, in fact, this, this draft is exactly like what they had against MVP Phoenix the other day, except that replace Ohio on the Nyx Assassin with uh, Ohio on the Bat Rider, and then that's the draft that they've got, so... Yeah, I, I honestly think for Fnatic, their token Five to success comes remaining. from these supports. I think you hit the nail on the head, man. If DJ gets some good rotations, gets some decent momentum in the laning stage, then it's, of course, going to bode pretty well. And I think more towards the mid game, there's a lot of pressure on this Rubik to get some big steals because their team is a, a little bit 
light on control. So if he can steal the, the paralyzing cask, if he could steal a doom, that's always the dream. Or even just uh, the lightning bolt from Zeus for some extra damage. I think he's going to be one of the one of the key playmakers. Yeah, 3-4-3 three, three is somebody that I'm looking forward to, to watching, really, because... He's been hyped up pretty, and I hyped him up during this draft as well. I'm very excited to see what he can do. By the way, apparently Scan was telling me that he actually wants to be involved in casting. So I thought about asking him to do some casting with me ever, anytime I ever do the SCA to region again, which is it's going to be a while from now. But um, yeah, I don't know he, when he, the next season for this is supposed to start. That's so C Kappa. For those of you that are have not been following this tournament, this is only one of four seasons. So. It's a $50,000 tournament, but the first three of those four seasons are only $10,000, and then they lead into that final one, which is a $20,000 prize. So um, I think they're supposed to take place kind of over the, the next maybe four or five months, uh, kind of weave in between the majors and TI I feel and like stuff. That's really good because that builds the scene. It's like the same thing as the Canada Cup tournament for mm -hmm. America and then South America. Then, like that. And that provides stability for a region that might not have, you know, this. And we, we go back and, like, we used to talk about this all the time and how the Southeast Asian region didn't have stability or they didn't have the tournaments that, you know, the European and American region had. And a lot of people were kind of concerned about the future of SEA Dota, which looks very bright now, right yeah. now, by the way. I mean, obviously you have MVP Phoenix and Fnatic, but you have all of these good teams that can contest them on a daily basis, like Sigtrust, like TNC, you know, tearing even. So there's a lot of good teams in this region that... I'm looking forward to seeing in the near yeah. future and hopefully with the C Kappa tournament and hopefully with the Manila Major, we get some better stability for the region. And ESL1 and, Manila, man. They're getting some right, exactly. really... It's crazy how fast things have exploded. I remember when Raman contacted me about this tournament and like just mentioned the prize pool. I was like, damn, that's serious money for SEA. Yeah, 50 for, grand yeah, for, for just some kind of random third-party cup. And then not that much longer after that... We got ESL Manila, which is what 150 grand, and then the major, which of course is in the millions. And you're like, what? All right, well, this region just went from no content to having better tournaments than America. Like, what the yeah. hell just happened? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's how I felt about like, like I don't know. Like there are some American tournaments. Canada Cup has is got a good prize pool, but it's not anything that's you know too crazy, like millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is unfortunate. It's, yeah, that's what we really could use in America to build our scene, honestly. And, and I'm glad that it's... I mean, obviously, TI, you could consider sort of an American tournament. But really, it's... I guess you could argue it's like the same thing as, like, the, the majors or even ESL, ESL 1 Manila, where it's all of the top teams and then maybe a couple of SEA teams, but mostly, yeah. uh, you know, European, American squads, Chinese squads. So, but... Uh, but I am happy that, for the fans, though. It's nice that they actually yes. get some top-tier events in the region that they can physically attend. Because yeah, it's, exactly. It's a, it's a wild region, man. Some serious Dota passion in, in I mean, C. we've had those, like, events. We've had, like, MLGs before. We've we've had TIs. We've had, you know, Red Bulls and stuff like that. And, and that, that's something that, you know, SEA teams haven't had. You go back, and what was, like, the last big SEA tournament that had, like, you know, oh, world-class teams in it? I don't think there have ever been... Any SEA tournaments that have had world class, I guess world -class major season. or the the major all stars one had some pretty top tier yeah. teams. Yeah, but that tournament was so defunct and barely watchable yeah. that most people don't even consider it as a. I I remember that tournament, and it's kind of crazy that like now that tournament is considered like better than half the tournaments that have happened uh, this past oh, year. Like God. you go back to WCA, and uh, I'm sure there's a couple of tournaments <laughs> I'm missing that are that were just not great. But I'll just I'll never forget that major all stars tournament. I had so much fun, but that first morning we showed up like an hour before the broadcast was going to start we asked one of the guys which computer was going to be encoding for the dedicated obs and he said wait what yeah. they're like you know like which one's going to be streaming to twitch and he literally you guys you guys want to stream to twitch it's just like they sponsor this event what are you <laughs> yes we want to stream to twitch i can't even begin to imagine that like, <laughs> like what <laughs> every event i've gone to has always been like they're ready for me. Yeah. You know, like the Red Bull event for, for like, they're ready for my observing. They're like, okay, well, we, and they're more than ready because they have like somebody there who's like, yeah, this guy's going to be a replay guy. So you just talk to him and tell him what you need to replay. So I had yeah. to explain to this guy, like, okay, well, here's what a team fight is. And this, we bonded over like that course of that tournament. We're like, oh, yeah, wow, that was a cool fight, right? And I'm like, yeah, that was good. You it was like they that. forgot to tell half the staff that we weren't just broadcasting to the venue, but we were also broadcasting out on the internet. They gave Vlad a computer that had, no hard drive or ethernet cable, but uh-oh, here we go. This could be a first blood attempt here, a battle for the top rune.
OD goes in first, Jug with the spin, but two Ion Shells are down on the side of Sig Trust. It's pretty big damage. Abba gets brought forward, and the Ion Shell in. This is going to be close. He eats the Fairy Fire. Net's going to stay alive. The first blood goes to DJ on the Enchantress. Net will end up falling. It's a two for one with Sig Trust finding the advantage. It might not be over yet. Rubik's on the run. 3-4-3 three, three, trying to make have, the great they escape. They have Spectral Intent. They have Spectral Intent. It's like, it's the cask off, and now he's definitely going to fall. It's going to be three for one exchange. Wow. You know what the big problem is? It's a Rubik, right? Like, any other hero there that actually has damage, and you're like, we probably win that fight. But you're fighting into Iron Shield. You have a Rubik who only has Telekinesis and, like, Wet Noodle for a right click. I'm surprised they were able to get that first blood, too. Yep. And they're aggro trilating, it looks like. This is crazy. I, I know they want to fight into a Spectre. But especially when the Doom starts getting levels and getting some creeps, this is going to be tough. I think this is the right choice for now, but we'll have to see how things turn out here in the next couple of minutes. It definitely strikes me as a difficult tri lane. Batrider down bottom should be able to get some decent farm against the Dark Seer. This will keep the Doom from just free farming in the jungle, and with this aggro tri lane, they'll keep his attention, so Let's they should know where Jabs is. Good. That, in theory, should make it a little bit safe for mid one on the OD oh. in the mid lane. And actually, Jabs is taking a lot of damage here. He pops the Scorched Earth and should be able to make it away, but living life yeah. on the edge. DJ is actually going to man up here. Is this going to be a kill mod? Why did he go back in? That was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Did he get blocked by the ring? Gotcha. I think they want... Oh my lord, that smoke oh. from DJ. That special dagger still might kill him, though. Uh, nope, nope not fine. enough. And he'll take fine. over another Centaur. Wow, that's, They nice. wanted to go back in and get that kill, but that's not worth it, I don't think. And especially for DJ to survive. And he has 700 gold now, which is kind of insane, but... Yep. This is that a was greedy. pretty darn good start for the Enchantress. He drew the first blood for that bonus gold and now picks up another kill up top. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty close to the dream. We'll see what he what does do, with this smoke. What do you even smoke. buy now? And meanwhile, Bi Batrider yeah. gets a kill bottom lane with his Firefly up. And he actually just had... I think he had like eight stacks or something, I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, I don't think Darkseer was prepared. He had six charges, but it wasn't enough, it looks like. Radiance oh, very nice. That is a little bit unexpected, though. I think on paper, Darkseer should be able to live against Batrider. Most of the time with Surge, even if you have yeah, stacks of so. Sticky, you should still be able to just get away from him. In these early levels, of course, when he's only level 3, level 4 with just brown boots. I wish yeah, I'd, I, I didn't I'd seen it, but I think, it's, uh, I, I think that's definitely a misplay from the Dark Seer in that I would scenario. Agree with you. Yeah, I, I, you can see there is some good vision, but I don't really think that affects the Batrider too much. Top lane it looks like there's going to be something going on. The Doom's here, he's level 2 now, he's got the Centaur Conqueror Stomp. The Enchantress is roaming back up after getting at least a little bit of regen, but not, not that much. Yeah. So DJ is actually kind of in And they had a ward there, so Jab saw him. And he's going to run at him now. I mean, but he's going to take a boulder toss to the face. And look at the center of Congress. He has to pop the Scorched Earth again. And DJ is just pumping out the damage, man. This is great, though. Keeping the Doom on the back foot is exactly what you want to do. This kind of jungling Doom really shines when he can have run of the map and really pressure your mid and your side lanes when they're not expecting it. With DJ, even just keeping vision on him, knowing where he is, that's a victory for and Fnatic here. And he over, too. Yeah. He might actually die here, but it's almost worth it, I, I feel like, as long as he buys out. Yeah, and the untouchable is already doing some work at level one, and Boom Bell is like missing attacks because of it too. And you're like, okay, this well, is that's some sex. space creation here. He's gonna pull the mid laner out as well. Cast comes in, doesn't take any bounces. <laughs> oh my God, there's three just heroes the tower, dude. It's, it's almost worth it just to die in the tower. There's four heroes get going after. Dude, him I now. think at this point, this death is complete value. <laughs> like this He's is ridiculous. Bought everything. He's like, listen, I all right. You know what? <laughs> I just wasted two minutes of their lives. That's some Benny Hill shit right there, if I've ever seen it. Look how far the Zeus ran. I can't believe he just ran from his mid-tier 1 to the mid-tier 2, down to the bottom tier 2, back to the well. He missed out on a full level of experience. Vid 1 is now a full level ahead, and probably will be almost two levels ahead of him, too. That's that's crazy. That is really that's nuts. insane. Steve. And it's not, just, it's not even those three heroes, too. Oppo was rotating. He's like, look, I'm going to get I'm to be a part of this kill now. <laughs> Don't even worry, guys. I got my iron shell. I got surge. I got everything. It's fine. Well, this laning stage is going damn well for Fnatic. They had a little tumble at that top rune skirmish, but you look at the top lane, Jug out farming the spec by a nice little margin. OD really far ahead of the Zeus now. 21 and 10 versus 13 and nil in terms of CS. And down bottom, we saw Batrider get the kill, and he is racking up the last hits. He's really having a good time. Almost level 6 already. Uh, bottle, and looks like Tranquils will be coming out pretty soon. So every lane for Fnatic going well. And DJ now rotating into his own jungle. He has phase boots up already. Just going to get a little bit of farm and XP now that this top lane is pretty secure for net. Yeah, he's, they've won this top lane, at least for now. Uh, the, the wave's pushing in. Lakeles has only got 15 last hits. It's not terrible. The good thing about, and this is what Fnatic like to do with the Spectre, is that you don't always have to have a great start. You can come back with Haunt, with Phase, and, and Urn. If you have those items, and even just regular boots and an Urn, you're in an okay spot. That's, that's yeah. going to provide you enough to be able to get 
uh, some good kills, and then, you know, once you get to the mid-game, once he hits that level 6. So, it's not over for Safe Trust by any stretch of the imagination. Lakels will head to the jungle, he'll get some farm. It comes down to how does Fnatic play this in the next couple of minutes. Will they get the Blink Dagger for Ohio in time? Will he be able to find some lasters on the Lakels or even on my pro mid, who's getting... Oh. DJ coming in on Abba down bottom. They don't quite coordinate it right, though. The Bat Rider pops it as Invis Rune, and he did have a lasso. That's a little bit unfortunate. With the Golem as well as the Dark Troll Summoner, you think they could have found the kill there, but they whiff the gank. Instead, there's a kill up top. It's the Rubik that uh, gets killed by Sig Trust. Two on three. Eek. Well, that's Infernal Blade and Hurl Boulder, which, by the way, is 120, 125 damage is pretty good for that ability. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and, it and it doesn't, doesn't cost, cost mana. any mana. Yeah, so that's something. That's an ability. And I actually didn't know it was mana free. That's a little ridiculous. Yeah. I guess I it mean, makes I sense. Guess... Mud golems don't have mana, so it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, mud golems but... are idiots, man. Listen, I, I, <laughs> every time I talk about mud golems, you just look at them and you're like, wow, these guys are. They look so stupid. Oh, Lakel's up top. Oh, no. Net doesn't man up on him. Gets him close, though, with the Blade Fury. He's level 5 with 3 points in Blade Fury, so nice it's short cooldown. One point stats. He's holding a point? I think. No, he's got, no, he's he's got, got the stats. He's got stats, and he's got Dyer's 3 points in Blade Fury. Tower. I was kind of wondering. I was oh, like, yeah. that seems. No, but that's the right build. You only go for 1 point stats, you get the max Blade Fury now. and. He'll get Omni Slash here pretty soon with Phase Up as well. This is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Even if there's a Creep Wave, you can still find kills. And Raquel's obviously with no HP. He's got two Tango. He's like, I'm just going to head home. But now yeah. mid lane, my pro is about to use... Uh, if he had a, he's got an Arc Lightning. He's got a Zeus Salt ready to go now. He's going to regen up. There's the Lightning Bolt. And Zeus Salt should come out. And actually, they just get the kill with Raquel's using the Hurl Boulder. So they don't even need to use the Zeus Salt. Yeah, and my pro will continue with his regen room, which is nice. Yeah, very nice. Jabs gets it. Finally gets the good rotation he's looking for. And even though Doom's been pressured so much, look at his KDA. He's 3-1-2. and two. He still had a pretty good early game halfway through level 4. That's one of the scariest parts about this hero. He can Zell's recover out. so well. Now up top, Boom Bell. Caught by the initiation from Rubik. Net going in with the Blade Fury, but doesn't have the damage to finish him off. Now Sig Trust going to turn the other way. Coconut comes. Net only level 5. One creep kill sh shy of 6. No Omni Slash coming out, and they've got more than enough damage with the global ult from Zeus. 7-3 to three is Sig Trust. Get another one up on the scoreboard. Yeah, Doom's just a really good hero, guys. L let me tell you. If, you, <laughs> if you figure out how to play the four-position Doom in uh, a Dota game, if you're you know a pub player, just as long as you don't stay in the jungle and do that, you know, let me get my Midas crap, and, and you roam around like what Jabs yeah. is doing, you're, you're going to have a good time. So uh, my pro, eh, he was getting run at by mid one, but he's out of mana now, by the way. But here comes the rotations. Boom Bell's going to come mid. He probably has cask. He's not going to use it. Mid one is having an okay time in terms of CS, but he he did go down. He did lose that first life. He's going to be yeah. trying to get treads next as well. The, and then the, the build after that is picking up drum on, on Outworld Devourer. That seems to be the new hot thing. So Yeah, Zeus versus OD is such an odd matchup in terms of how their power curves kind of intersect. Like, OD is obviously the better laner. He can harass really well, has just better stats in general, better range. But Zeus hits this peak at level 7 where his burst damage is just insane. And he can destroy yes. the Outworld Devourer and really start to take momentum. So it becomes this kind of weird battle of attrition where OD has to play real aggressive, then real conservative. And then once he starts to pull ahead again, he can outpower the Zeus later on. So I think Sig Trust, though, are playing this well for now. They're staying very active with the Zeus and putting out a lot of damage. DJ continuing to move into enemy territory. Oh, Jab's wow. trying to poke him down, but in comes Zeus. All that magic damage is just too much for the poor Dryad, and my pro gets his killing spree secured here. Exactly what you were talking about. The, the magical damage against an Enchantress is exactly what you need to bring her down. That or an Arista, which is always nice, but yep. uh, my pro has more than enough damage with not even Max Lightning Bolt. He only has level 3, but it does enough damage with these squishy heroes that they go down oh, instantly. That's an interesting build. Yeah, second point in Arc Lightning. Yeah, that, that's that's just to outlast hit the Odira. At least get last hits in the mid lane a little bit easier. I've seen this... You yeah. see this a lot, especially in, pro, or in pub games, too, just to, to be able to actually secure those last hits, level 2 arc lightning. You're the not extra bounces much, help, so. too, from 5 yes, to 7. Sure. It's yeah. uh, it, it seems like a small upgrade, but 5 is actually not enough in a lot of scenarios to hit every unit that's nearby. Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a fine choice, and he's been doing really well with it, too. I mean, he's not getting the most last hits, but he's still getting kills, and... Um, against all these squishy supports, 3-4-3, three, three, might need to think about getting that, that second point in Telekinesis and getting that, that spell steal and then moving into Null Field because there is a big chunk of magical damage coming out from Sig Trust and they could really use some resistance in some way, shape, or form. And I think that's part of the reason why you go for Rubik. Not many people think about Null Field and think that it's a good ability, but I think in this scenario you kind of have to worry and think that, okay, we need some sort of resistance, and we'll see if that's going to be the case as they push top with yeah. that. Yeah, it'll definitely play a big role once we get towards that mid-game. Nullfield's a notoriously bad value Radiant's point, but tower. it does it's scale pretty attack. well once you get it up to level 4. It looks Dyer's like Fnatic will be able to grab this tier 1 tower attack. uncontested. Sig Trust 
not interested in putting up a fight here. Spectre, just phase boots, only level six, still struggling a little bit. Not terrible farm, but not really great either. Smoke in the mid lane. Ohio has the blink dagger, picked it up about 30 seconds ago, and ready to reveal it here with a po uh, potential kill. Hastrun oh, spawns. What they luck give for it to him. Mid one. Uh, I think they should have given that to mid one. Oh, but there's you a smoke can see the, the other way, coming. too. Yeah, they're going to try to find... Group 4-3 is going to blow this up, but they already got the last one in my pro. The Haunt's going to come in, though, and then my pro is going to get the Zeus ult off. He wanted to find his set, fall in his sandies, but look at the damage coming out. The Iron Shell. Now Netskip is in the Blade Fury going to work, and Jabs is in trouble. His Scorcher will help him survive, but he can't get up to that high ground, and that will bring him down. But on the other side, to 3 for 2 stage, DJ will finally come in. Impetus hit will do some serious work to Abba. Uphill miss. It will go. He will survive from it. Just barely. Whew. Wow. That was a super chaotic team fight. Two for three overall. Sig Trust finding the advantage. Spectre stays alive, and that might be the biggest aspect of that fight. He gets a nice little gain out of it, and or no, oh god, they had three down. I'm sorry, I misread that. Fnatic took the fight. Jesus, Mott, it's still early here. It, it was tough. It was like all over the place. Honestly, I understand why. I thought it was the same thing. I thought it was two for three going the other way. But the biggest thing is what you were talking about. Lakel survives, and that actually helps him get back. And the Zeus, he did, down, he did go down. He got his Zeus ult off, and that actually made it for a pretty good fight. But really, it was just Fnatic didn't have every hero there. And uh, Sig kind of got caught out. Jabs was in a bad spot from the get-go, kind of. He, he got pushed back into the tower range at that point. Yeah. So they're going to head bottom instead. Ohio, he's got his Blink Dagger. He should be able to get out. He, in fact, will. Abba's just, I think... This is the problem with the Dark Seer is that in comparison to a Batrider, really Batrider just needs a blink to be effective. Dark, Dark Seer needs levels and a mech, uh, yeah. plus Arcanes, so, because he's going to go Guardians eventually. It definitely feels like the Dark Seer has been the most underwhelming pick Radiant for Sig Trust so far. The lane just, against the Batrider, it's not the ideal matchup you're hoping for. We'll see a lasso, though, as well as an Omni Slash right onto the Dark Seer. Speak of the devil, he gets brought up to the high ground, nowhere for him to run. Meanwhile, in the top lane here, DJ initiated on Death Ward, paralyzing cast from the Witch Doctor, does big damage. Courier just barely survives and flies back home. So one for one around the map, both teams turning up the Octane here, Mott, and finding some ganks. Yeah, but Fnatic continues to have the net worth lead, but 343 is going to walk in. He wants to get this ward down. He ever, however, has to use his telekinesis. He's going to stick up, but he's in trouble. Mid yes. will help him, but they have the haunt. The Zeus still comes out, easy kill with the cast, and now they're going to chase after mid one. I don't think they die for this. The urn is up. They'll get more urn charges for the Spectre, who just got some with that kill top lane. Yeah. So they're still looking for maybe a fight mid here. Yeah, it's not that easy for Fnatic to take fights, especially that little engagement. You feel that global presence, how quickly they can just haunt Thunder God's Wrath and do a really big amount of damage, especially you, to these squishy supports. Can you imagine if they had a Fury on in this game? <laughs> yeah. How easy this game would be for them, just yeah. like globally? they Because they would not only be able to transition these fights into pushes, but they would have that damage from Nature's Prop to be able to go for like an Orchid or something and, yeah. and stop uh, the, the Juggernaut from being as effective as he is. So the, the crazy thing is that, and by the way, mid one, and I, I should talk about this. I talked about this in the draft in that the Outworld Devourer is not great at coming back from a deficit, but he has a Midas. So he really Radiant's wanted to secure his farm for the later attack. stage of this game. And I kind of think this is okay given the circumstances and who he's against. I mean, and I think it also makes sense if you look at Fnatic's lineup, they don't really push that well, just in general. They're really good at fighting, they can get ganks, but they're not breaking high ground anytime soon. This no. game's not gonna end before 30 minutes unless Sig Trust do something Radiant. really ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. obviously push very well, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Like, you know, there's so, not really much push on either side. It's it's a good Midas game, I think. It's it's a good Dad, read uh, to suspect that this game might go on a bit longer than, than usual. And uh, with that, they will smoke up. DJ will lead the way with face. He's going to have a drum as well, which is pretty common. Ohio's looking for his force. He's got the blink last initiation. I'm pretty sure my pro is dead unless he backs like right now. Yeah, this is a, a tough spot for old Zeusy. No mobility here, just a TP scroll. Won't use it. Flaming lasso right into net. There's Blade Fury, and that's an easy kill on the Zeus. The TP coming in gets canceled. Is absolutely no way it would have made a difference in keeping the Zeus alive. So nice smoke rotation. They'll try to transition this into a tower push, it looks like. Bat Rider laying down the fire to clear out the creeps. And as such, it looks like Sig Trust may try to pressure this tier one tower here in the top lane. Second tier one tower of the game. The good thing is Fnatic do have the Enchantress. That's the one good pushing hero they have and she does do a lot with you you have a big tanky creep up front you don't need that creep wave you have that extra damage coming out it looks like saving for trust want to continue and try to push themselves but they might lose a tier two out of this yeah that's a pretty slow push in the top they didn't even make it to the tier one yet and this tier two is already at half health they've also got the death ward paired with the plus six regen of the unholy aura on the satyr so they can actually sustain really well up top, Bat Rider just going to try and defend a little bit. Play some Ring Around the Rosie with Abba. Flame Break actually connects. He's going to try to chase him down. Ohio 
will turn in about face. Gonna fight bottom. Yep, tower stays standing, just barely at her deny range. Rubik, what's he get there? Just steals Scorched. himself a Scorched Earth. Not bad. I mean, that's pretty good. You already have a lot of sustain like you talked about coming And you can buff it up and then steal something else while it's still on. I exactly. think it stays on you. So, yeah, pretty yeah. good spell to have for sure. There's a lot of good uh, spells to steal in this game. Surge is like... like just non-damaging spells too, you know, movement spells like Surge and, and Scorched Earth. Even Spectral yeah. are pretty solid for the, the Rubik to stay alive. But there's all these other big team fight abilities that you can steal. Death Ward probably shouldn't be stolen because of Voodoo Restoration, but Doom, pretty easy steal as long as 343 is not the one to be doomed. Zeusult uh, is, I wouldn't say super easy, but it, it's, it's something possible. that, it, it's definitely possible, exactly. Yeah. So... We'll you see. Know, I mean, it comes down to that spell steal. He just got it pretty recently. So Yeah, and even though OD is not that great at pushing in terms of towers, the Essence Aura is really good for just five man in general. That extra yes. bit of mana sustain really makes a difference, especially for these supports like Enchantress and Rubik, who are pretty low on stats at this stage of the game. If you just get one or two of those mana procs, it completely changes how much damage it's you can put out and it's what kind of burst damage you can do. Yeah, it's... It's really good. Here we go. Smoke up in the top lane. They're going to go into OD mid one. A bit overextended here. He gets doomed straight away. Even the haunt from Spectre comes out. There was a rotation from the Bat Rider, but as soon as the haunt comes, he about faces and heads back to friendly territory. So, a eh, risky farming position from Outworld Devour. Not too surprising. He gets ganked that Pretty far sure past the river. Pretty sure he's just paying 343. He's like, where's my wards top lane? Like, I should have some <laughs> sort of vision. Even if he had vision, I don't think he survives that. You're right. He was just in a really awkward spot, a little too far up. Yeah. Um, Although they so, may get a tier 1 tower out of this and a little bit of space opened up. So if they get the tower, it's, it's not the worst trade. And he's still top of net worth currently. Dyer's and he'll get even further up with this tower kill and they're not going to be able to defend this. Yeah. Because they just use Doom. You know, they just use Haunt. There's not really any reason for them to try to defend. Sure, it's a tier 1 tower and it's important, but they kind of let it ha they have to let it slip at that point, especially with the threat of Lasso. And now a 4 step up in the Bat Rider. Not only that, they also have the OD going for an Orchid. It looks like he's picked up one Oblivion staff. He's still ways away from the second. Hmm. But the Midas will help that, so... Yeah, the Orchid Outworld Devour. It's a, a very uh, risky item. I would say high risk, high reward in this scenario. If you get the initiation, Midas Orchid is incredible. You've got a lot of attack speed, a lot of right click, can yeah. lock people down. But if you get jumped on, if you get vacuumed into an unfortunate position, your mobility is pretty low tier. So yeah. uh, a lot of onus on mid one here to make sure his positioning is, is on point. I feel like that's why a lot of people go Atos, is because it gives you the best of both worlds in terms of yeah. not necessarily mobility, but tankiness and having uh, an ability to be able to well, oh, hold oh. that thought as Abba's about to get Firefly Lasso. Now well, they're going to look for my, or like, Kels instead. The vacuum will come in. Great wall. Now they're going to get the Lightning Bolt. A Steel Wall, though, pop it off. The Sandies will bring down at least one, but this one will fall on the other side. And now they're going to Doom's going to chase after. Looks like Ohio, but he'll be able to make it out. On the other side, you can see TPing out 343 makes it away just barely. No disables available. They had the Infernal Blade, but Jobs wasn't in position to actually get it done. So it turns into an OD for a, a Spectre, maybe a little bit more. As my pro TP coming in, it's going to be net. He's looking for the Omni Slice. He's about to find it on Jabs. Will he use it? He's going to need to. The Impetus is coming out. He's going to pick it up eventually. Now he's going to go to work on the Shard Golems. <laughs> And they're gonna keep chasing Ohio and DJ looking for Boom Bell. Looks like he Ooh, might be able go. to get his cask off. He does, but it only hits on Ohio, and they will end up picking a double kill for DJ. An aggressive play for Fnatic to TP in net there. Still, it yeah. works out really well. Yeah, it was sort of an odd fight. I'm gonna pull up the replay here in just a second. It was odd because it was a 4v5 for Fnatic, and they still traded one for one in terms of cores. So it started out really well, a lot of space for Jug to farm, and then he comes in and basically just cleans house, and by the end of it, it's obviously a, a great fight for Fnatic. So here we go, started with the smoke rotation. Ohio was also uh, hasted up to start off this fight, so it was a really good initiation. He goes straight for the Kells. Abba gets a brilliant four hero vac wall, sets it up for the Zeus, and just look how much damage Fnatic uh, takes. It's a little bit sad, honestly, that Sig Trust do so much damage but just can't finish the kills on the team. They needed well, a Death Ward or just something else to do that last bit of damage, and it, it could have, that was close to being a team wipe the other way. With that jug just being like, well, shit, maybe I should have TP'd. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, he does TP. He makes amends for it at the very end. Yeah. He's like, okay, I'll just get two kills for my team. No problem. I'm here it is. most of the work. Destroys jabs and uh, gets that freebie on the Witch Doctor as well. As far as, far as more damage is concerned, I feel like Lakels will provide that later on down the road. I don't know if he goes Radiance this game. He's at 1,300 right now. If he gets ganked again, he's really in trouble. And him dying down bottom is a pretty big deal. Yeah. I think this is the stage of the game where you think to yourself, okay, if we can take a team fight and I manage to find some money, I'll Dyer's go for Radiance. But I'm not holding my breath. I'm ready to commit to the defusal and buy some of those pieces if things get sticky. I think it's all about that next five minutes. Does he get free farm? Does he get any kills? Or does he get ganked? And that should be pretty telling 
about what build he wants to go for. I think Radiance at this stage is still worth going for, but it's just so risky to say, all right, I'm going to commit the next 4,000 lot of unreliable gold to this Radiance, guys. Yeah. Good luck. Let's make some I mean, some he might space. even get caught here as Ohio <laughs> picks up an Invis rune too. Yeah, this is very dangerous, but I do like the smoke coming out from Sam. Yeah, they're trying to bait with him. Oh, no, no, don't use that. Okay, that's not good. They just doomed uh, an illusion. That's uh, Jeb's why. Oh, <laughs> why? I saw the lightning bolt, but that's a doom down. Oh, that hurts. That's the end of the smoke, because they know. They just saw that illusion get blown away by nothing. Yep. So that sucks. Wow. Well, the uh, OD does have the Orchid now, so that's a nice additional piece of lockdown for Fnatic. I wonder Radiance if Fnatic knows. Fnatic, Fnatic, Fnatic can't know the Doom's down. They, 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 you don't see the animation. Uh, I didn't see it at all. I just saw the lightning, so I, I doubt they caught... Maybe they noticed it, but that would have been super, super difficult. Yeah. There, so I don't think Fnatic are really intent on fighting, but now if you're Sig Trust, you're like playing five minutes together, you're pushing down bottom for whatever reason, they're gonna walk on top of an Observer Ward, which is really good vision here. And now you have to decide if you're Fnatic, you wanna fight this. I mean, you have you have a Blink Force initi initiation for Ohio on top of that, you just got the Orc from Mid-1 like you're talking about. So they clearly wanna do something here, it looks like. Yeah, Battle Fury up on Jug, two Blink Daggers on the Dire as well for Darkseer and Zeus. So a lot of things have changed since they last fought. Now Ohio goes in, Lasso onto Boom Bell, but right away comes out the Haunt, oh, back baby. wall again, the ult from Zeus, Fnatic in trouble. It's a goddamn slideshow because the damage is just too much. <laughs> a one for four as Fnatic get obliterated. That's the global presence we were talking about, Mott. You blink and you miss it. Sig Trust just erupts with a fury of damage and again, a 3,500 net worth gain out of it. My God. It makes me really sad that we saw that in slideshow format, you know, in, in uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint format. Style. But uh, that was, well, you saw that back wall coming. You're like, this isn't going to end well for Fnatic. That's the first big team fight they win. And now Lakels gets up to 3,100. And this is what we talked about. Sure, you have the unreliable gold and you're thinking, okay, I can't go Radiance this game. But now. He picks up a huge team fight like you're talking about. Yep. He gets up to 3,200. He just needs to farm like three or four more creep waves, and he has his relic. And then they're going to have, on top of that, they probably Radiance go for a veil for top. the Zeus. And I think he should have it flying out oh. here. In fact, he's getting it soon. So your Radiance Burn does more damage. All of your other magical abilities do more damage. And that's going to be huge. That was a vac wall without a veil of Discord. That yeah. was a gigantic engagement. And Abba was the one that did most of the work. That was without Doom, by the way, as Jabs had actually gotten orchided up by the OD. So... You're yeah. the OD now, and you have to think about, okay, I probably should look for this Darkseer and make sure he doesn't ever do that again to me. Yeah, and it looks like a good initiation for Fnatic. It was Ohio that started the fight off, got a decent lasso, and just immediately, as soon as the Haunt comes out, the fight falls into disarray. And I will say Fnatic's positioning was a bit lackluster. They set up for that Darkseer to get another damn good vac wall on at least three heroes, maybe even four there. One of the other big problems, and this is kind of common throughout this region I've noticed, is teams that like to fight don't always go mech. And that is one of the differences in item builds right now. Sig Trust have that great team fighting item, and Fnatic don't have one. And I, I can't help but feel like if one of those drums, are either on net or DJ, obviously you don't want the jug to get mech, but it's relatively the same cost. If that's a mech, it makes such a difference in these team fights. It mitigates a huge amount of the damage that they're dealing with. Uh oh, this uh -oh. is good. This is dead mid one. Look how quickly he dies to the Doom Death Ward. And DJ is only surviving based off of Untouchable. And even that, the magic damage is surreal. And it's actually going to bring him down in the end with the Lightning Bolt coming through. This is an Aether Lensless uh, use, by the way. So he's getting these Lightning Bolts without that extra range that you want. Yeah. So you now have to resort to split pushing if you're Fnatic. And uh, even if they have a mech there, obviously, I don't think they survive. Maybe in a 5 on 5 team fight. But the problem is also, going back to your point, so Chancers really doesn't want to build a mech, and no one else on this team wants to build a mech. Yep. I mean, Rubik's never going to have the money to build a mech, probably, unless he gets a really good start. Yeah. And OD, again, I mean, he I wants more OD damage. I think OD could. Like, he definitely wants damage. I mean, it's not ideal, but personally, I just feel like the benefits of the mech in a game like this, where it's 12 to 20 in 24 minutes, the value you get from that healing is... It's, it's just there, you know, it's that compared to the Orchid so far this game. What value has the Orchid added? Now OD's thinking, crap, I need some defensive items so I can live and actually use this item that I invested yeah, in. Yeah, he's going to get a BKB now. You know, at least if he had a mech in that fight, it, I don't know if it would have totally changed the game, but, you know, you, you have a, a fighting chance. Maybe a few more of your supports survive. The one thing that is still going very well for Fnatic, though, is Net. He's farming very well. Still number one on Net Worth, well ahead of the Spectre. And They're going to go for the Spectre. Has the Battle Fury complete? Yeah, here we go. Five Hero Smoke. They force, they're looking for the last one, they can't get it, Ohio doesn't have an Aether Lens, and so, really good back from Sig to know that something was up there and that they're all missing off the map, they're not farming bottom, there's nobody in the jungle. This is a smart play. Net has to do a lot of the workload here, and uh, 
with the Battle Fury, it's very good against Spectre, but now the Radiance is coming out here. I think he's got it completed. He does. So the damage is starting to get pretty ridiculous. And I completely agree with you on the mech front, but it's just... You don't have a hero that really can pick it up. And, and especially with fighting into a Spectre and into Zeusult and into all of this burst damage and even all of the sustainable damage over these team fights, a mech would be huge. They actually... Lakels is in a really bad spot. I'm pretty he's sure he's dead. got the Aegis, though, so I don't know about the Fnatic committing to this. Even if they kill him once, Sig Trust is on the way. This leave. Spectre's got friends, and he has Haunt up now. He could come right back to life, Haunt, and they'll take this fight. That's what they're going to do. Ohio manages to blink right before, so he does get into the tree line, but it gets interrupted by a nice back from the Darkseer. They're going to try to chase down Teal one way, and the rest of the team gets the uh, Bat Rider as well as the Outworld Devourer. Oh my god, Mott. It's another disastrous fight here for this Radiant side. DJ finds the Zeus. He will TP after the Lightning Bolt comes out. No way for him to interrupt it. Nice heads up play there, but still a three for Aegis trade. Far from ideal for Fnatic. Net gets Doom bottom lane, but he's actually man fighting jabs. Net has Doom up for another good 20 seconds or so. He can actually just turn and fight this Infernal Blade. is not going to do enough, but jabs realizes his mistake. It's a good, it's a good idea to try to Doom him, but Net will stay alive and he'll be able to TP out. But yeah, I mean, that was just, you go for the Aegis, and, and it Radiance it took a little while longer than they were anticipated because, you know, guess what? Mischance on Radiance is actually huge. But uh, they, they needed to leave a little bit earlier, and they just couldn't quite get out in time. And so they're giving away all these kills. Sure, you get the Aegis, but you're giving away all these kills to not only the Spectre, but to everybody else on this team as well. Like, Zeus is going to have his Aether Lens now after not having it since, uh, you know, not not getting it going for the Arcane's Blink and, and Veil instead, but this is going to make that, this game that much harder. And on top of that, the Darkseer's mm -hmm. probably going Sheba's, I think, as he's picked up a Plate Nail, which is going to help his team even further. Yeah. Signature Trust, really, all they need to do is just play smart, get another uh, item or two on Spectre, and, and kind of just go from there. They, they really shouldn't be concerned with how this game is progressing. Yeah. Mid-1 is not having the impact that they would have liked for him to have. Maybe with a BKB, this game gets easier, but I, I, I'm not sure if that's the case. Yeah, I, I really like the way they're itemizing. We talked about it in the draft, and it feels like they just have a really good, well-rounded team in general. Great team fight, pretty good lanes, and they're going to scale well into the late game. I really like the way Zeus built his items this game. Arcane Boots, right into the blink, the veil that you talked about. Then he just straight up buys the Aether Lens. He doesn't break the Arcane Boots, recognizes that he needs that mana sustainability. That's one of my... Every time I play a hero where I go Arcane Boots and then buy an Aether Lens, everybody flames me for not breaking the boots. I'm like, listen, I need the mana regen more than I need that extra well, range for spells. It, it Sometimes... On... It's it not always the best play. You know, sometimes you need that mana if you're five manning a lot. And I like that he did it this game because I think it actually made a big difference. I think he could have gotten away with not having the Arcanes because of, mm -hmm. he's got two, he's got an Arcanes and a Guardian Greaves. He's got an Arcanes for Witch Doctor and Guardian Greaves for the Darks here. So it's not like they have no mana sustain coming out from his team. And with the amount of yeah. five mana that they're putting out, he could have gotten away with it. But it, maybe at the beginning, the Witch Doctor's like, I don't think I'm ever going to get money for Arcane Boots. And he's like, all yeah. right, I'll just keep my, my Arcanes then. Yeah, exactly. There was a point in this game where it wasn't looking quite so easy for a Sig Trust. There's the ult from Zoom to scout things out they're gonna find yellow and net will just tp oh home God, no the kidding? doom comes out to interrupt it through the blade fury and this is going to be a freebie on the jug nice setup there it does take two ults to get him but it's a nice kill nonetheless meanwhile up top maybe some pressure coming to lakels but good map sense here he'll back out just in time and that incoming gank will falter I'm pretty sure that he just ran out of Blade Fury time. And he got Lightning Bolted and Vacuumed at the perfect time. I'm not even sure if the Doom was what, what caused the team. I, I have no idea, It was hard honestly. to tell. It was close. I saw the Vac and the Lightning Bolt, and it looked like they got absorbed by uh, by the Magic Immunity. Oh, but either, either way, way, I think totally worth it to deploy the Radiant Doom there to secure the kill. Tower. I mean, yeah, that's the top net worth hero going down, and he's not farming for 35 seconds. On top of that, this will finally get Signature Trust a Tier 1 Tower made, which, by the way, it's 28 minutes in. They have a 24 of 12 lead. They have yet to get this Tier 1 Tower. This is yeah. a very important tower. It actually lets them be aggressive into the enemy jungle. Yeah, they've only killed one to tower total. It's just that tier one in the bottom lane. Radiant so they have done very little in the way of pushing. This is why they only have a 2500 network lead. Radiant it's going to start kicking up a little bit here as yep. they get more kills. Uh, Ohio might have been spotted. Yeah, they know that he's there. Uh-oh. Well, he's got a four staff now, so he can at least scoot away even though his uh, blink dagger's broken. And he'll be just fine. Attack. Life on the edge, though, Mott. Dude, it's 20 minutes into the game. They hadn't... And They've only taken one Roche. Like, that That last Roche was, like, at 25 minutes, so... Yeah. It's kind of crazy, because both teams... They, they have oh, not great Roaching lineups, at least Signature Trust don't, until they get this amount of farm that they have currently. But uh, now that they have it, they can really sit back, keep the lanes pushed out, maybe go for a Tier 2 push if they want, and then look for a Roche on and into an Aegis into another type of team fight. And I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So the onus is really on Fnatic to say, well, what do we do here? 
Are we going to be the ones to smoke up? We have okay farm on our jug. We have okay farm on a lot of our heroes, realistically. But maybe we wait for our BKBs. That's probably what they're going to do. They're going to at least wait for the BKB on the Outworld Devour for Fnatic. And then they might look for a fight. And they're going to get it here with this Midas usage. Yeah. Um, Dog has his Manta done. And we oh, need the Ultimate Orb, I believe. Yeah, he's, he's still a ways away. So. Yeah, the but BKB he's from OD is going to make a big difference here. Mitigates all that damage from the Zeus. But... They do still have some tools, uh, the Witch Doctor Death Ward most namely, so it's tricky for OD. Net needs to be so careful here. If yeah, Zeus just randomly ults, <laughs> which could happen, they're hunting. He's going to heal up now and he'll be fine, but that's a, that's a pretty risky play against this global strat. Yeah, that was a little dangerous, especially if you don't know where the ward placements are. Yeah. Maybe they have one at the stack. Tier 2 tower bottom is going to be put in deny range, whether or not it's going to be taken. Boom is just going to walk up and hit it, and it looks like uh, Net gets in with the blink dagger and denies it nicely, and that's that. So. Yeah, good stuff there from Net. I like the Shiva's guard coming out on the Dark Seer. It's not an uncon uh, uncommon item to see, but I think really good against the OD and the Jug just in general, help mitigate some of their damage, and yes. it gives them even more AoE magic damage. The slow is a lot of these team fights have been fanatic, trying to scatter and get away, so this should help. And again, like some of that too. disruptor factor, you know? Yeah. Ah, you're going to run? Be slowed into oblivion. And the, the, with the veil on top of that. I'm, I'm really glad that more Zeus's and, and more heroes in general are picking up this item. For a long time, veil was, was good, but it wasn't ever considered good enough to, you know, be picked up over certain items, like maybe a yeah. four staff or, you know, whatever. And now with it's the in a good place to now. it, it's, I think veil is a very strong item. It's pretty cheap. Um, it's really value int for the cost, I think. For everything it gives you, it gives you 18 intelligence, which is quite a lot. Uh, and it's really just... It's the, it's the magic weakness. Uh, increased yeah. magic damage, 25%, is, is a lot when you think about it. When, with, with all this magic damage that you have... Um, especially against Null Field, it pretty much mitigates it mitigates Null Field essentially. Yeah, and one of the, one of the biggest changes they made to it was that BKB doesn't cleanse it anymore. It's just like Venos ult, where I think yes. BKB keeps you. Does it keep you even safe from it, or does it totally go? It does. Through? It keeps you safe from well, it keeps you safe from any magic damage and to begin with. So oh yeah, the, duh. I mean, it, it, the, the the veil is on you. The veil is on you like it did, like you like you talked yeah, about. Like but it doesn't dispel. Is. So exactly. when you come out, it's not. It, it, that makes the item so much better of an investment because it used to be really good until everybody gets BKBs and it's like, well, now this item is borderline useless and now it at least has utility at every stage of the game. I think that was one of the biggest buffs for sure. It's also really good for heroes that go Octarian Core. It's a 20 second cooldown for yes. now, but once it gets lower, it's really nice. They're going to jump in. This haunt's going to come through. That's going to pop the Manta style. The reality up under the high ground. It's not what they were looking for. The Spectre will come out. He realities even further. They're going to look for a back wall. They'll find it. Zoom comes out with the Orc and beautifully timed. Jabs gets it off. the pops the PKB. Mid one in trouble. The Death Ward going to work. He might fall here, but he's going to get safe at least for the time being. On the other side, Omni Slash goes. Net will bring down Jabs. They'll bring him down in turn. Not a great trade. So far, a three for one and almost a four for one. The Kel's getting hit up with the impetus, but DJ is out of mana. He might get this kill still. The urn, the Glimmer Cape is not in time. It is a four for two still, and my pro gets a double. They're still chasing after this Bat Rider in Ohio. He's got no mobility items for another six seconds. The Lightning Bolt will miss, and it looks like he might actually make it away. The Vacuum is almost there as well. And they are wow. really going after Radiant's this guy, but they can't quite get him. Still, I am sure Signature Trust are happy, and they might even pick him off that Lightning oh. Bolt. Zeus is actually damn close here. He's going to get out, I think, yeah. I think he Zeus just... is going to blink and try one more. Nope, he backs out. Okay, makes the safe call. Wow. So a two for four overall. It was a super spread out fight. It was kind of odd from City Trust. It was like a four plus one where Spectre was way in deep in this area, just trying to chase down the straggling supports and the rest of his team dealing with Net up this way and kind of running around the trees. And it seemed to me like being spread out would be advantageous for Fnatic because it helps break up the big vac walls and stuff that we've seen. But... In the end, they just didn't have the resources to sustain through it. And even though the Spectre died, he still distracted like half their team on the back line, which really isolated the Jug. Yeah, this is the biggest problem. I feel like they... If Fnatic get the jump more often than not, the counter initiation is there from Signature Trust. And it almost feels like in every team fight, though, Signature Trust is the one that's been initiating. The biggest issue is Dark Seer's back wall, I feel like, right now. Because not, that not only does a lot of damage, but it gets them put into such a position that they... You know, Net's going to, or not Net, rather, Lakels is just going to go to work on the Spectre. They have a lot of AoE damage. The Death Ward is obviously doing some work, and this is without the Aghanim Scepter, which I think he will be able to get eventually. Yeah. It's just the, the, the Vac Wall is, is catching them out, and they're, they're not really able to counter-initiate. Mid-1 often gets just 
brought down by one thing or another. He Do you even think it's a mistake BKB, to but... doom him through BKB? It, it worked pretty effectively. No, I, I don't. I think it's a great. I think that's probably the, the one target you want to doom. I think that's just yeah. the, the best possible thing you can do because he wants to be able to get all of his abilities off. He wants to be able to use his orc and he wants to be able to fight. And he can't do that if he's be, if he's doomed. You know, like he, yeah, it's like. You think it's of like the having BKB, an enemy BKB kind of when you right. You it. think of the BKB as kind of countering Doom, but Doom kind of is a trump card over BKB because even doesn't do damage, it still completely locks him down. He can't even yeah. use Astrals to keep his friends safe. So yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think it was the good call there. It's I noticed like that, it, but didn't want to. Kells also it. just does enough physical damage at this point, or even just damage in general, that he can chew through the BKB. Yeah, that's true. Here we go. The global ults again to initiate the BKB for mid one used right away. It looks like Rubik could be the first casualty of this fight. Boom Bell gets off a great death ward. It's doing a lot of damage here. Softens up mid one a little bit. Finally, the back wall comes out from Darkseer. They lose the Doom, but this fight is going all Sig Trust all day. Some TPs get interrupted, and Fnatic get cleaned up. A one for five overall. It's starting to feel like this dire squad is just taking control of this game mod. Another very convincing team fight, and over 4k net worth gets exchanged there. So this goes back to what we were talking about, dooming mid one. He can't do anything when he's doomed. That BKB gets popped and he's like, well, this is useless. He'd be better served to have a Lincoln Spear this game than a BKB at this point because of how many, how often he's getting doomed. He should have known that was what's coming. And it just, they're too tanky at this point. So everybody's really tanky on the side of Sick Trust. You're like, my pro is 1,500 HP. Lakels is sitting at 1,800. This is without a heart or anything. And Jabs is the, t the tanky frontliner with the BKB, the Omni Slash. And they split it up between four heroes, and you just don't do any yeah, damage to any dude. of them with a level three Omni Slash from Battle Fury. I'm looking at this replay now, and it's just disgusting. They start the fight so confidently with the global. They destroy the Rubik basically before the fight even starts. And you're right. You watch mid one that fight, and he pops his BKB. Good reaction there. And then what do you do? He just right clicks a few times and it's not even close to enough damage. That was by far the most convincing fight we've seen this game. Like Sig Trust just ran him down. I, it's just whenever you have an important orb like that that does a ton of damage, to not being able to use it during a team fight is so, it's so bad. It's I would it is crippling and, and I think that's the it's not necessarily a problem with this build. I talked about maybe going Lincoln's. It really is that going to help though, because they're gonna be able to pop that off with Infernal Blade or something. I don't know, but Yeah. It's uh, just, there's not an easy solution. It, and we talked about the OD pick, and what, it was the most likely pick out of all the picks in, in the pool. And uh, I just, he probably didn't think he was going to be focused this hard. And he, he was up in top of the net worth for a long time. In fact, the top three net worth were all fanatic. And now it's a Darkseer at the top with Spectre not too far behind. And obviously the Jug is in second place. But he, Jug just doesn't do enough damage right now, which is surprising to me. But he needs something else. I don't know what it is, but he needs something. Yeah, this is really looking rough for Net. His farm is incredible, but you're just not feeling his impact in these fights. He's 259, so... Yeah, it, it's... You know, if you look at his net worth, you look at his inventory, and everything kind of makes sense, but Sig Trust are pretty tanky. Even their supports have ways to survive now. Witch Doctor has his Glimmer Cape and Force Staff, so he's pretty hard to lock down and totally isolate. The Zeus has a Blink Dagger, and... Part of the way, uh, part of the struggle for Fnatic has just been Sig Trust taking the lead in these initiations. You know, they stop any kind of blink initiation from Fnatic from happening, and it feels like their draft is very reliant on the Bat Rider to start fights and get pickoffs. When Sig Trust at that are the aggressors, where they blink that or break that blink right away, it's so difficult for Fnatic to take the rest of the fight on their own terms. Bat Rider does have a BKB now, though. Uh, we saw the 10 second charge in the last fight, but. That could be a potential game changer for Fnatic if he can I use don't it know. appropriately. I, you're going to get your last off. He gets his last off anyways. It just comes down to yeah. his positioning. Net, by the way, is putting some good pressure on this tier 3 tower mid, which they don't seem to give a damn about. They're finally keeping back home. And he forces out a glyph. That's a minor victory there. Uh, yeah, I think that's as best, as good as he can get for Oh, this poor Boom Bell gets left behind. Ohio finds him in the tree line. Easy lasso set up, but he's actually got the Glimmer Cape. They have to use a dust to secure a kill. Make some space for the rest of his team to come in, though. They oh, want this no. gem back. The Haunt as well as the Dark Seer on the way. BKB used by mid one. They'll lose their Rubik. Oh, no. And now Lakel's just getting chunked down by the OD. He's got the Aegis, though. He's coming back. Remember, he's already used his Haunt, but now MyPro blinks forward. Can't quite finish off the OD and Sig Trust will have to back out. It ends up being a one for one plus the Aegis and I think the gem actually does get recovered by the Radiant. It, it did, does. Yeah. Ohio's got it and takes it back to the well. Yeah, that that if they didn't have that the Aegis, I would have said that's a crazy fight. But because they have the Aegis, they can go for that. Now yeah. everything's down. They don't have, uh, well actually they still have Doom, but you don't have your your back wall at this they point. They've got you don't Zeus have as well actually. So it's, yeah. They, they it's could still, still try fight. to fight if they want. I think though. Yeah, they're just going to back out.
it was kind of surprising because they okay. TP'd back jabs to the mid lane and he had to walk all the way back to that engagement. So he was it was a four versus five for the most part. But it was kind of crazy because everyone else was backing up from signature trust. You're like, this is I thought everyone left already, but it wasn't actually the case. They were all ready to go with the exception of jabs. And so they're able to counter initiate. Sure, they lose the Brubick on Fnatic's side, but again, that's about as good as it's going to get. Mikel's now has been spotted by items of war. They're going like, to find the lasso and jump in as well. They're going to put him up on the high ground, bring him down. The Orca will come out. He's going to pop the Manta to get out of that silence, but he's still in trouble with Spectral. The Sanities will bring him down. Zuso will come through and almost brings down two of these heroes. Three. Now Omni Slash and Jabs going to work. Gets the kill. Abba can't get there with Guardian Greaves. It's a Hex, by the way. He's going to get chased down, but it looks like Net will stop the chase and... Finally, they get something to hang their hat on, Zyrias. Yeah. That's a huge fight for them. Absolutely. 2,700 net worth is the, the net change there. Huge, absolutely, for Fnatic. Is this, is this actually going to happen? They don't have buyback for 56 seconds for the Spectre? Is this going to be... Like Rax? I don't know. And feel they like don't have Glyph. Be. Actually, Mod, this is pretty scary. Zeus all down for another minute. Now Fnatic did have to use a lot of their ults to get to this point though. And here oh, we go. Boy. Back wall, the Dark Seer. He might be the one that helps make this hold. Jabs taking a lot of damage, though. BKB's popped a plenty on the side of Fnatic. You can feel the lack of Spectre in this fight. They do lose their Rubik, but still they kill the Doom, and that's the big target. It's a dieback for him. Boom Bell almost dies. DJ has to go in deep to try to secure that kill. Four staff will keep him alive for now, but a few more auto attacks might just bring him down. My pro misses the lightning. They'll have to settle for Ohio instead. He burns the lasso to try to buy himself some more time, but it's not enough. Godlike streak now for my pro, and they will repel. It's a good hold for Sig Trust. The tier three tower is still pretty healthy. They get a couple of kills, but Doom is the one who really suffers from that. It's a dieback for him. Yeah, but he's okay with it because they did hold. I mean, he, yep. he's got more than enough items at this point to be effective, and I think he's completely fine with it. And and one thing one thing you pointed out in that engagement I thought was very telling was they're really missing their Spectre, and you talked about it. That back wall was huge. Mm -hmm. And in any other fight with that Spectre up, that's probably, like, more than three dead. That's probably almost the entire team dead at that point, even with BKB, BKB's pop for Fnatic. So the Spectre being down, obviously, it makes the hold harder, but they can get it done. You know, with the heroes they have, my pro being the biggest of, of the bunch to do a lot of damage. And now he's building into what seems to be the Octarian. But now Net is going to have to go ahead and CP out. Lakelis doesn't have a Bastion, so he can't find a, a way to stop him from getting out. Of, and Lakelis is going to build into that heart, and he should have it in about a thousand gold. Speaking of Bastion, the Jug will pick that up to get some extra damage going his way. And uh, all told, it's probably going to be another little while before we see another engagement. Sig Trust yeah. going to wait for Roche, I think. And, and get that Aegis again. You know, one build here that stands out to me is a pretty big change of pace is this Enchantress. She went for uh, Drum of Endurance into Dragon Lance. Nothing too crazy about that, but actually didn't go straight for the Ag. She stopped off for a BKB first and now is trying to grab the Aghanim Scepter. Pretty close, only about a thousand gold away, but it's such an important item on Enchantress and opens up so much more damage for her. Also just makes her fights easier because the uh, Ags gives you additional range on the ult so you can sit way far back. I think the BKB is warranted here, but I, I think that is just so telling of how much pressure Fnatic have felt this game. And seeing the Enchantress alter her build like that is, I, I think, fairly rare in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I, I like the play, though, from DJ, yeah. honestly. I think it's you you have to do it in this game, especially with all the damage. Another Hex Mot, this time that's on the OD. This is big. Pretty big. Yeah, I mean, they need to find a way to lock down a couple of these heroes, and that's going to do the job for them. And there's no, with the exception of the Doom, there's no BKBs this game. So, yeah. but the I problem think is one he needs zoomed up, blink, he's not going to eat. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing. He's he's had to sit pretty far back, and he won't be able to get up front in order to get the Hex off, and he's not going to be able to... I mean, that's the biggest problem. He's going to get doomed, and he has no way of initiating with, like, a Blink Dagger like you're talking about, or a Force Staff. I mean, I, I'm picturing mid one. I think the most value he can get out of that Hex is honestly on the Dark Seer. Like, if you see that Dark Seer on his way in, if you can pre-cast the Hex or catch him as he comes in before he gets off the Vac wall, that has been the turning point, a turning point in a lot of these fights where the Dark, like, it's going kind of okay, then all of a sudden the Dark Seer gets that opening and just completely cripples their positioning and does a huge amount of damage. He's the one that's really brought these team fights home, at least it feels like. But now this Spectre is damn scary. She's going to go into Heart, has the Reaver already and another thousand gold in the purse. That last little exchange, it all started with the Spectre dying. It was a three-on-one, and even though they got the kill on Lakels, the amount of damage that he returned in that scenario was gross. Him plus the Zeus ult alone almost killed the three heroes that killed him. So when you think about that translated into a team fight, he has the full heart. The other pieces were on the courier. Oh, my God. Okay. So, yeah, how do you kill him now? Right? Good luck. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's super tanky. Dispersion's a pretty good ability as well. Uh, uh, not yeah. bad. So they have an Abyssal, which is helpful, but... This is an aggressive play, and it seems that Signature Trust know this is happening. They didn't scout out the smoke, but they have an Observer Ward or two in the jungle, which makes it so that they know something is up, although 
it's not like they could be farming mid or top, but really bottom not being pushed out, I think, is the most telling factor for Signature Trust here. Yeah. Roche is back up at 25 seconds, by the way, and if it was just a couple of seconds earlier, Fnatic would actually be in a great spot to take this because yeah. of where Signature Trust is. But now this is, tr this is troublesome. I think you can smoke up if you're Signature Trust, and that seems to be what they're doing. And they'll head to the roof, it looks like. And they do have the gem, and the gem's actually kind of a big deal here because of the Witch Doctor's Glimmer Cape. Once he uses the Glimmer Cape, they have no way to stop the Death Ward. Uh, unless they kill him with AoE or something, he gets caught by some cleaves. But outside of that, uh, that's actually pretty damn scary. He's holding on to Ohio's gem right now. They check Roche. Sigtrust do see that the big boys respawn. We'll take a look at their vision. And they have a little bit of intel about what's happening. They know Fnatic's down here. There's the global. The ult from Spectre as well as Zeus. Mid one. Pops his ult. He gets the hex off on Doom this time. They blow up the Doom before he can use his ult. That's actually quite big. Now Net kills the Witch Doctor as well. It's a whiffed initiation from Sigtrust. Let's see if they can clean it up. They will kill the Witch Doctor now. The Spectre's still alive. And Fnatic are running out of resources. Two for three as this dire team starts to regain some momentum. On the backside, it's MyPro versus DJ. No TP scroll on this. Enchantress, so it's going to be tough to, to survive here. My pro does blink into the trees to survive through that last impetus, though. Ohio should not be like helping him out here by chasing. Like, there's a ward, they know exactly where he is, they could kill him. Yeah. He's going to blink away and avoid the spectral for now. But oh, the dagger actually still hits him. I don't they think they're going to be able to grab this. This is a little too difficult. Maybe if they get a blink back. Well, Lakel seems determined for this, they really want him. Ohio is playing. This is deja vu, Ma. This is DJ all over again. Uh oh, now they get caught, though. The Hex comes out. The Dark Seer gets turned into a piggy. The Bat Rider gets zapped down. And what was a two for three relatively even fight turns into basically a team wipe. Fnatic just get completely destroyed. It, it just, it was looking so good, but they needed, I think, um, they needed DJ to be fighting with Kells instead of chasing after my pro. Sure, it actually probably stops a lot of the damage oh, that Net would have had to deal with. But yeah. I think they needed more damage to bring with Kells mm -hmm. down. And even if they brought him down, I still think that signature trust cleans that fight up. I will Again, say, though, big play from the OD. That Hex was beautiful. Doom blinked in, was mid-cast animation, and he turned him into the pig and kept himself alive. If the Doom had gotten the ult off there, I think that fight is just straight-up lost for Fnatic. Like, it's not even close. You don't get that chase at the end. The OD just dies and does no damage. The fact that he was able to mitigate the Doom and kill him before he used his ult, that at least gave Fnatic a fighting chance there. And, and finally, Sandy is starting to do some damage. I don't, well, he's not really gotten it off here in team fight because he gets Doom every freaking time, but... Um, yeah. Sandy He's actually brought the Doom from half HP to nothing instantly. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, so the, obviously the, the pickup of the Hex is going to help in terms of giving him that intelligence. By the way, they picked up the Aegis for the Spectre of the Cheese, I believe, is on Jabs. It is. They also yeah. have Lincoln Sphere picked up by Abba. So not only that, the Lasso is going to be pretty difficult to get off now on that Spectre. This is actually a really good her. Lincoln's game. There are very few single-target spells that will uh, interrupt that. I think the one that you want to burn is the Enchant on the yeah, Enchantress. Enchant. That's probably your wasted single-target, but there's not too much else. Omni Slash will break it on that first okay, bounce. Yeah. It comes down to the, the Rubik, I think, actually, Radiant's getting off his abilities. Yeah, that's attack. true. But overall, I, I would say it's a pretty good Lincoln's game for the Dark Seer. It, it makes things even more difficult for Fnatic now. Bat Rider has to be extra cautious about how he initiates. But this easy is, stuff for Sig Trust. Aegis on the Spectre with a heart. They're just going to put Lakelis in the front line and let him absorb some damage. Here we go. Ohio grabs him with the lasso. They pop their BKBs. They just want to blow up Lakelis. And the rest of Sig Trust just kind of watching on the low right. ground. They're going to wait for the Aegis to come back. He still has Haunt. Back wall on three. The ult from Zeus brings him down low. They have no BKBs to spare. Fnatic went all in on the Aegis of the Immortal. And now it's going to cost them their livelihood. Three down straight away. They'll make it back to the well. Buyback now on the Jug. They're going to hold on, but OD and Batrider dead in the grave for over a minute with no buyback. That's just Abba doing Abba things at this point. I He's hit every single one of his back walls, and uh, you are exactly right. They, they put everything on that Aegis. They needed to wait for their BKBs. Yeah. Uh, they needed to maybe not use them for that Aegis, but if they didn't bring him down for the first time, then there's no way they can bring him down a second time. But now the problem is that they can't do it again. Yeah. Oh, Inspector picks up a butterfly. So, yeah, couldn't kill him before. Good luck uh, killing him with right clicks now. Oh, God. Sigtrust so is going to focus on structures here. Yeah, this this is going to be a full set of racks. There's nothing they can do. Omni Slash is still up, but the Jug is sitting so far back. He does not want to go in. 
Yeah, and, uh, it's uh, there's still a tier two in the top, so no megas will come out. I don't think they'd have time for it anyway. But two full lanes uh, potentially for Sig Trust. You know, I feel like that in that situation, Fnatic is in a Fnatic is in a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. If they initiate on the spec and don't use their BKBs, Dispersion just straight up kills them. And if they use the BKBs, they kill them once, but then they just get rolled over when Zeus ults and Spectre haunts, and they have no way to mitigate the magic damage. Like, I, I don't know what the right call is there. I feel I, like they had to, to do that. Spectre. You could argue that maybe they would need to go on another hero like Abba or or even on yeah. Zeus. But even if that's, that's the true. case, then they just they haunt and they use whatever ability is available. Whether you know it's the Zeus ult if the Darkster's getting lassoed or vice versa, it, it's just you have to go on the Spectre because. At least if the Spectre's dead and there's no haunt, the damage is a little bit mitigated. Oh like, there's not gosh, as much. Dude. What a stroke of luck for Sig huge. Trust. Yeah. The, the Zeus just walked into an arcane rune and goes, Oh, wow, what a great rune to have on this hero. I got my Octarine core. Fuck it. Let's just ult. It's a 45 second cooldown. Oh, by the way, Fnatic was smoked up walking through the enemy jungle just about to set up a gank. I mean, that, that timing could not have been more ideal for the Zeus in multiple facets. I would have I would have Zeus ulted there without the arcane rune. Yeah, honestly. it's like that. No, no matter which way you you, uh, you 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 read it, it's a great incentive for him to blow the ult there. It's like the dream. Arcane yeah. rune on Zeus with an octarine is one of the scary. Like arc lightning has less than a one second cooldown. Yeah, you could spam like, the crap out of that. <laughs> like, that Three is seconds for a lightning bolt. That you're. You become a machine gun with arc lightning, and you yeah. you got a giant artillery cannon with so your. You're casting lightning arc lightnings faster than some heroes can auto attack. That's that's insane to think about. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. But uh, the arcane root is down now, and now the arc lightning goes back to a, a mere one point three second cooldown instead of the lowest ah, second. Garbage. Ridiculous. See, honestly, not a great spell. Come on now. But uh, lotus orb up on the doom though. Fun item. Yeah, they they're just getting all of the items they need to to safely take this first game. And by the way. It's a game one of a best of five series with no winner's advantage or anything. And they are 51 minutes in. This has been a great first game, Zara. This has been... Yeah. We're, we've not really lacked for team fights. Maybe the comeback mechanics is the only thing we're really missing out on at this point. Yeah. And, but uh, I, I do not see Fnatic coming back from this. They're, they're two sets of racks down. I mean, just look at that gold graph. It's a 30k deficit right now. It's it's pretty big. There, there, there's a noticeable difference in inventories here. And even just experience as well. You look at, yeah, Jug's doing pretty well. He's level 24. But Specs level 25. Dark Seer's level 25. And Zeus is level 23. Awesome like, awesome all those additional stats attack. really start to add up at this stage of the game. They're not even concerned about net split pushing bottom. First of all, they want that tier two. And they might just take the racks. They're like, fine, you can take a tier three, maybe, and get a Racks, we'll take yeah. your megas. So. I think they're more thinking it's 4v5 right now. We can initiate easier than you with our global. Let's go, guys. Let's take this fight. And the jug Netta's doesn't even finish up, uh, off the tier three. Yeah. He TP back, by the way. And he does pick up a massive madness, which is true. Lotus Storm comes out, so DJ slows himself, which is nice. <laughs> Like, yeah, uh, now they have a Lincolns and a Lotus to buff Lakels with, plus they have Guardian Greaves to back him up, and he has cheese. Like, there are so many ways for him to get out of jail here if he gets initiated on. Like, they're, they're just, I think, fingers crossed that Fnatic try to jump on Lakels again. If, if they can just back, if he takes enough damage and he just backs, he's going to let the heart regen. But they're going to uh -oh. try to find a fight. BKB used by Ohio. They're going to go right in. BKB's popped to plenty. They go for Boombo this time. They only bring him down to half health. Rubik dies to the global presence. The haunt is enough to finish him off. Bat Rider as well and Fnatic. It's a race back to the well. They need to regen. They haven't done any damage to Sig Trust. And man, this is a painful fight to watch if you're a Fnatic fan. They're getting dove in their fountain now. Lakel is just tanking the fire bush as they go for the full five man wipe. Buyback from OD. Fnatic throwing everything they've got, but that's it. The GG gets called. And. Not a moment too soon. Sig Trust literally just bathing in the well, dancing around as they wipe all of Fnatic. What a convincing win, 50 to 21. That's an impressive display coming out from a team that is definitely uh, the underdogs in this particular series. This is, Fnatic have had some of the best games in the past couple of days, past couple of weeks even, uh, that you'll see out of an SCA squad. And all of a sudden, Signature Trust, who took them down in the winner's bracket uh, final, I believe, now have a 1-0 advantage here in this series. And it's again off of Lakels doing some great carry work, but obviously the team set it up for him. My pro caught up. He was able to do some really good work on that Zeus. And Dar I think my MVP of this game, and I feel you probably feel similar, is Abba on the Dark Suit. He's oh, level yeah. 25. He's 9-3 and 33. His kill involvement is insane. He has 589 GPM without a Midas or anything on a Dark Suit. So it's yeah. been an insane game from Abba in this particular instance. Yeah, and towards the end of the game, you look at the farm on the Spectre and the Zeus, and they're the ones driving. But that pure 
period in that early to mid game when Sig Trust weren't that far ahead, it was the Dark Seer that allowed them to take those team fights that propelled that Spectre from. Like, remember that time when we were wondering if Spectre would even be able to farm a Radiance? It was the Dark Seer that opened that up and made it happen, man. We talked about it at the beginning of the draft. Sig Trust seems like they're always on the same page, a clear game plan, and a great draft. So much team fight, and they executed it very well. But alas, that's only game one, folks. The Specified Grand Finals will continue after this short break. I'm Zayori. He's Mott. We're both from Moonduck TV. Thank you so much for joining us here. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs>